Right now, Quadron Wilson is back in the hospital for another surgery. What his lawyer is saying about why his client was shot during the arrest. Also, police suspect a 14-year-old of driving drunk leading to a crash that left multiple people injured. Plus, a local fast food chain is stepping up to help those impacted by the war in Ukraine. And later, we take a look at Aaron Rodgers' new contract, what it means for the Packers as they try to get under the salary cap. This is News 3 Now at 6. And we begin with breaking news. We're watching the aftermath of some sort of terrible car crash on Madison's west side. This happened on Raymond Road. On News 3 Now is Brad Hamilton live at the scene now. Brad, what are you able to tell us? Well, Eric and Charlotte, as we were actually on our way back to the station on Raymond Road, uh, we saw a car we couldn't make, you know, make and model, anything like that, completely up in flames. And you were watching as nearby neighbors are trying to douse the flames uh, with any water that they could find. They were bringing water from outside of their house. And I actually want uh, our cameraman, Kobe, to, to show you uh, what we're seeing right now as far as that is the, the car that, uh, you know, what's left of it. Um, and obviously it was um, surreal seeing it in, in real time as people are, were desperate. I mean, you were... You were just looking at a bunch of neighbors feeling completely helpless as a, you know, a car is on complete fire and, and we heard screaming. We talked to a witness who said that she believes someone was screaming for their son in the car. Mm. All, there was so much chaos going on and, and really you just couldn't tell what exactly was going on. Um, but eventually uh, the fire department here and they did confirm that someone was injured from this car accident. We, we saw someone actually getting removed from the vehicle that you saw totally charred and they were taken uh, to the to the hospital, you know, uh, um, and, and that's obviously a fluid situation. We don't know the condition of the person. All we are being told by the fire department is that someone was injured. I mean, I've, I've never in my short time, I've, I've never, you know, seen an accident live like that. And, and you know, it was uh, pretty, pretty obviously unimaginable you, you felt like you were in a movie and uh you're just hoping for the best there so uh we're going to send it back to you guys and we're going to keep you updated as soon as we learn more, more information all right brad hamilton live that's it again at raymond and gilbert mm -hmm. we hope to have an update for you tonight on news now at 10. all right up next the investigation into why state agents fired their guns while arresting Quadron Wilson last month should wrap up within the next week. That is what Wilson's attorney told us this afternoon. But right now, Wilson is headed into surgery for the second time since that shooting back on February 3rd. Naomi Coles live at UW Hospital with more tonight. Naomi. Yeah, he's likely in surgery for a cyst on his spine near where those gunshot wounds really right now as we speak. I spoke with Wilson's attorney who talked to him earlier today and said he was fine, but he did sound pretty scared. We still don't know why Wilson was arrested or even why he was shot as there's no evidence he was armed in the incident on Madison's east side. That's why his attorney says that the state agents who fired their guns ought to be charged with reckless endangerment. But a quick note here, officers are rarely actually charged in these kinds of incidents. That's what we're waiting on. That's what we're hoping for. Um, I can tell you that um, in every case I've seen where someone shoots somebody or points a gun at somebody or shoots at somebody, um, I have always, well, I shouldn't say always, but most of the time seen a reckless endangering charge at least. Steven Eisenberg says Wilson has been getting good medical care at the jail, but jail still can't give the same level of post-surgery care as a hospital. He will be released back to the jail either tomorrow or the day after uh, or the day after that. For more on the details of this case, you can head online right now to channel3000.com. A 29-year-old woman is hospitalized after an alleged stabbing at the Dairy Drive Tiny House encampment. Madison police say the incident occurred just before 4 o'clock in the morning. The victim reportedly walked to a nearby fire station for help. Her injuries are not life-threatening. The suspect, a 52-year-old woman, allegedly used a screwdriver in the attack. She reportedly left the encampment before police arrived. The victim does not live at the encampment and was visiting a friend. No arrests have been made and the investigation is ongoing. A Clinton man accused of stabbing a man at a home in West Dallas is charged with attempted first degree intentional homicide. According to a criminal complaint, the victim noticed 21 year old Jose Huerta pacing in an alley near his home. The man spoke with Huerta before walking back to his yard. That's when Huerta that allegedly attempted to stab the man in the neck with a knife. After a struggle, the victim made it back to his yard with cuts to his head and hands. 
Puerta ran away and was arrested days later. His cash bond is set at $75,000. Well, let's check your certified most accurate forecast now. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti on the patio. Beautiful day, Gary. Nice to be on the patio without a jacket, and tomorrow will be another one just like it. Let's start off by taking a look at the live view from the WISC Skycam. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, there's a thousand. There's another thousand. The Edgewater Skycam showing sunshine on the Capitol and a beautiful sunset uh, getting ready to take place in the western sky around Platteville. Doppler track, free of precipitation across the state. Temperatures this morning started out in the upper 20s to lower 30s. Madison's low was at 28. High temperatures so far have been in the 50s. Madison's topped out at 52. But might be a little higher than that. We'll have to see. Janesville has at least reached 57. And current temperatures are still in the lower to middle 50s for most of southern Wisconsin. But tomorrow morning will be in the middle 30s with partly cloudy skies. And tomorrow will be partly sunny, breezy, and unseasonably mild with a high of 65. Later on, I'll take a look at the forecast. It also includes some rain in it toward the end of the week. Gary, thank you. Madison police say a 14-year-old has been ticketed for driving under the influence after a two-vehicle crash sent multiple people to the hospital last night. Emergency crews were dispatched to North 6th Street near the intersection of East Johnson about 10 last night. One vehicle carrying four people was found up against a retaining wall in the front yard of a home in that neighborhood. Madison police said a 14-year-old was behind the wheel with a 16-year-old in the front passenger seat. Two adult women ages 27 and 38 were in the back seat. Police say the car belonged to the 38-year-old woman. Authorities say the vehicle was, quote, full of open intoxicants at the time of the crash. The WIAA calling on schools to stop appealing officials' decisions to the court system. In a statement, WIAA Executive Director Stephanie Hauser said that appealing decisions made by on-site officials undermines the rules agreed on by WIAA member schools. The statement comes after an incident during the boys' basketball tournament that led to St. Thomas More High School appealing a decision that expelled them from the tournament. Governor Evers says he's releasing money to expedite court operations in Milwaukee, as well as money for mental health diversion and treatment. When the pandemic started, courts all over the state had to adjust, but the Milwaukee courts soon built a significant backlog. Now the county is getting $14.5 million to expand their courthouse operations to reduce the severe backlog that has built up. This funding will also allow for 24-hour GPS monitoring for those ordered to be tracked while on bail, as well as establishing a Milwaukee County Mental Health Treatment Court to help ensure individuals receive the support and services they need while lowering incarceration rates. DHS Secretary Designee Karen Timberlake reflecting on what the state did right and what it did wrong in responding to the COVID pandemic. Timberlake spoke about the efforts in an in-person Wisconsin Health News event in Madison. She says the 15 million COVID tests conducted in the state the past two years was critical. Timberlake also gave the National Guard a lot of credit. You cannot imagine a more responsive, flexible, um, dedicated group of people, truly. They did our first tests, they gave our first vaccinations, they drove supplies around the state in the early, early days, right, when we had vaccine coming in and we had to drive it out to 300 hubs. She believes we won't be seeing restrictions for the foreseeable future. Instead, there will be a focus on testing and vaccinations. Meanwhile, the CDC says 37% of wastewater sites are seeing a 100% increase of COVID in their sewage testing. While that number may be alarming to some, Dr. Jeff Pothoff says we shouldn't be too concerned. He says just because the sewage testing numbers increased 100% doesn't mean a 100% increase in COVID cases. Right now, he's keeping an eye on hospitalization numbers numbers. But we have to be vigilant. We always have to watch, you know, what's going on. Might we see something? Um, maybe, maybe not. Uh, can we promise that there will never be a day where we don't need to wear masks for, for a week or two? No. Uh, but, you know, until we see the data that says we should do that, I think we're probably okay. As for a potential fourth vaccine shot, he says immunocompromised people will most likely need one. For everyone else, it is still uncertain. President Biden gearing up to go to Europe next week for major NATO and European Council gatherings as the fighting in Ukraine continues. Today, he signed a bill that includes more than $13 billion in humanitarian, economic, and military aid to Ukraine. Meanwhile, Moscow has retaliated with its own set of largely symbolic sanctions on President Biden, his son Hunter, and several top administration officials. Tomorrow, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is set to give a speech to Congress. The Madison police say they're investigating a possible arson case, arson of a Ukrainian flag. The flag's owner lives in the 1700 block of Winnebago Street, called police at 7.30 yesterday morning. She says the flag was gone, burnt to Debris found where it had been flying. The owner last saw the flag about seven Sunday night. Anyone who was in that area at the time or has any information is asked to call Madison Police or Crime Stoppers. 
Three local Culver's locations are stepping up to help people impacted by the war in Ukraine. The restaurants on Cottage Grove Road, Todd Drive, and in McFarland will donate 100% of today's profits to World Central Kitchen. According to the website, WK, WCK is active in and around Ukraine and has already served one million meals to people in need. Culver says every location taking part in the Make Your Meal Matter program can choose how much of their proceeds they would like to contribute to the effort. Amounts range from 10% to 100% depending on the store. I think we're all looking for ways that we can help and some of us feel helpless and this is just another one of those small ways that we can do something. Locations participating in the fundraising effort will have Make Your Meal Matter signs prominently displayed so customers will know which restaurants will be donating proceeds to Ukraine and surrounding areas. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, Concerts on the Square is returning this summer. And Madison B-Cycle kicking off what it's calling its biggest year ever. A look at the new and improved fleet rolling out today. Dylan, how's that sofa you can't return from that big internet site? Honestly, not that great. Well, Slumberland can help. It's our biggest finance sales event of the year. Look what just $20 a month will get you when you spend $1,200 and pay no interest for five years. You're a hard worker. Provide for your family. Do good things in the community. Help out your neighbors. You've been there for so many others. Now... We're here for you. Your local Wisconsin energy and emergency assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your heat and power on. Apply now for a hand up. Sunroom saving season is here. Four Seasons has great solutions to beat the backyard blues and save 20 to 30 percent. Everything from decks and pergolas to screen rooms, porch conversions, patio rooms, sunrooms, and our new life room with retractable screens are on sale now. Let Coolview show you how to tame your backyard and improve your lifestyle. Call for a free backyard survey design and quote. Get a new view from Coolview. Broadway's Tony-winning best musical is Dear Evan Hansen. Dear Evan Hansen, May 10th to 15th at Overture Center. Find your tickets at Overture.org today. Hitting the road? Not all 5G networks are created equal. T-Mobile covers more interstate highway miles with 5G than Verizon. T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places than anyone. Another reason T-Mobile is the leader in 5G. Oh, my back. Hey, Dylan, need a mattress? Well, luckily, Slumberland has a big Sealy sale. Look what you can get for $20 a month, a Sealy Posturepedic mattress and a power base. And you'll pay no interest for five years at Slumberland Furniture. Welcome back. You may start to see more bikes around Madison starting today. That's because Madison B-Cycle is rolling out its fleet for the season. Operations manager Kurt Miller says this includes some improvements to the bikes. Over uh, the last year, we uh, put in a Bluetooth battery tracking system so we can better swap batteries and, and keep the bikes fully charged. The company says it's adding 75 bikes, bringing the total to more than 400. There are also eight new stations added this year. Annual and monthly subscriptions to the service will go up starting today. Get ready to enjoy live music in the heart of Madison this summer. Concerts on the Square is coming back to the Square. The Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra announced this year's lineup today. COVID-19 forced fans and musicians to breathe Stevens Field last year. This year's series will feature six performances starting weekly on June 29th. All of them are free. You're going to get a wide range of music when you come down to the square for Concerts on the Square starting uh, June 29th. Anywhere from pops, a uh, regular classical music concert. We have some amazing collaborations with the Wisconsin Dell Singers and the Ho-Chunk Nation. So it's, it's really something for everybody. You can learn more about each performance on the WCO's website. Each concert scheduled to start at 7 p.m. You can reserve a spot by putting down a blanket at 3 p.m. Reserved seating and tables are limited. This is the Chamber Orchestra's 38th year of concerts on the square. Still ahead, Milwaukee preparing for a busy few days, and not just because of the NCAA tournament. How many people say they will be... That 
how many they say <laughs> will be in the cream city this weekend and a disturbing trend among active duty service members how you can help those who are struggling with thoughts of suicide see i'm just thinking about the weather we're in mm -hmm. for some unseasonably warm weather tomorrow gary's got your complete forecast when we come back stay with us It's Wow Wednesdays at Hy-Vee. This Wednesday, get pizza for just $1.48. Wow, you heard that right. Get Jack's Original Thin Crust Pizza for just $1.48. Wednesday only. Scan the QR code or check out hyveedeals.com for more deals. McGann Furniture in downtown Baraboo should probably be called McGann Furniture and Flooring because we're the area's oldest and most experienced floor covering store. Our friendly staff will explain the many types of flooring available, answer questions, and make suggestions so you can choose what's best for your home and lifestyle. We always offer free in-home measurements and estimates and use the finest installers in the entire area. And remember, at McGann's, we don't inflate prices only to mark them down for a sale. Stop in today and discover the difference. You'll be glad you did. McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. Govan Cars is having a huge winter sale with the largest selection of vehicles under $15,995 or $249 per month. That's right, don't miss out on our winter sale with the best selection of SUVs, cars, or vans under $15,995 or $249 per month. We have one of the largest selections of vehicles in Dane County with over 500 vehicles in stock. So just come on in and ask for me, Crystal the Pistol, Govan. Go to Govan Cars East or West. You gotta go to Govan. GovanCars.com when you need a paint to fit your lifestyle, Menards has got you covered. From protecting against this, or covering this, to refinishing this, we have a paint for you. You also need it in this color, or even this color. We can do that. Stop in and talk to one of our paint professionals to make your colors come to life. Right now at Menards, Revolution Interior Matte Paint and Primer is $42.98 after 11% rebate. Doug. We gotta tell people that Liberty Mutual customizes car insurance so you only pay for what you need. And we gotta do it fast. Ah! Woo! 34 miles per hour! New personal record, Limu! Ah! He'll be back. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. It's Wow Wednesdays at Hy-Vee. This Wednesday, get pizza for just $1.48. Wow, you heard that right. Get Jack's Original Thin Crust Pizza for just $1.48. Wednesday only. Scan the QR code or check out hyveedeals.com for more deals. The suicide rate among active duty service members in the U.S. military increased by more than 41% between 2015 and 2020. That's according to the Department of Defense. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin called the findings, which came out last fall, troubling. One expert says there are ways family and friends can help members of the military who may be struggling with thoughts of suicide. Mandy Gaither has more. It's a disturbing trend, active duty military members taking their own lives. A lot of the strategies that have been employed over the past few decades to prevent and reduce military suicides, uh, by and large, have not worked. Craig Bryan is a veteran himself. The clinical psychologist serves as director of the Suicide Prevention Program at Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center. He says even when military members aren't deployed, they face stressors that others don't. Um, service members often move very frequently every few years, um, so it often uh, separates them from uh, family members from support networks. To support members of the military, be aware. Brian says many people who are suicidal make statements that raise concerns. These are things such as, you know, I can't take this anymore. I can't imagine anyone being able to stand this pain. No one can help me solve my problems. People would be better off without me. Brian says the next important thing to do is listen. He says we've got to shift the dialogue around suicide. You know, suicide's hard to talk about. Uh, when someone is experiencing suicidal thoughts, they oftentimes will experience a lot of shame. They're worried about how other people will react or respond to them. Bottom line, Brian says family and friends should be there to offer support. And through increased connectedness, we can actually uh, prevent suicide. 
Since research shows firearms are the primary method of suicide for service members, experts say locking up or securing guns can stop a person from acting impulsively. To get help, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. More spring-like temperatures for the next few days. There is a chance of rain by the end of the work week. Back to Gary for a complete look at the forecast. We could use the rain, but it's nice to enjoy a couple of mild dry days. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Tomorrow will be unseasonably mild. High temperatures will be about 20 degrees above average, looking for highs in the mid-60s. Then some shower chances return Thursday. A little better chances on Friday. The showers could be mixed with a little bit of snow north of Madison late Thursday night into Friday morning, and then we could see a mix changing over to some light snow Friday night before that comes to an end, and then temperatures start to warm up again by early next week. We're back to near 60 for Sunday and Monday with some rain chances from Monday night into Tuesday and Wednesday. How the Pacific Ocean, notice how the jet stream has pretty much flattened out. It's a west to east pattern. That usually means mild air. Uh, we don't see the big up and down swing, so that means no big storm systems, which is good news there. And the other thing is that we don't see any drops of cold air either. So with the jet stream relatively relatively flat. We're seeing that Pacific air move eastward across the country and really not have a chance to cool off much. So our temperatures are going to stay above average for much of the next week or so before a change in the pattern toward the end of next week could bring us a little bit colder weather. But right now in the short term, uh, there's a warm front out to the west through North and South Dakota. On the other side of that, temperatures are pretty mild, uh, mainly in the upper 60s and lower 70s into parts of Nebraska and South Dakota. On our side of the front, they're still mild, just not as mild. So as that warm front moves through, Expect those 60s to move in our direction for tomorrow. Compared to 24 hours ago, our temperature is 8 degrees warmer. Of course, we had a cold front come through this time yesterday. And notice out to the west, those temperatures running about 15 to 20 degrees higher than they were at this time yesterday. On future track, partly cloudy skies tonight. Winds out of the south, keeping temperatures in the 30s. That gives us a good head start on tomorrow. South to southwesterly winds, temperatures in the mid-60s. Clouds move in tomorrow night. There could be a couple of showers toward early Thursday morning and a chance of showers on Thursday. Temperatures still in the 50s. The next weather system will move in for Friday with some showers, maybe again mixed in with some flakes of snow at times. Otherwise, for tomorrow, look for partly sunny skies. It'll be breezy and unseasonably mild with a high temperature of 65. Down to 53 on Thursday with chances for showers, better chances for rain on Friday. Again, that mix in a couple of times, but notice over the weekend, temperatures go from the low 50s Saturday to the upper 50s for the first day of spring on Sunday, uh, upper 50s on Monday with some showers, and then we'll see cooler temperatures toward the end of next week. Gary, thank you. March Madness already driving up the price of hotels, and many are almost selling out in Milwaukee. The Greater Milwaukee Hotel and Lodging Association says when the bracket was revealed Sunday, hotel demand increased almost immediately. Prices going over $200 in some cases. Visit Milwaukee says NCAA teams, media, and officials will account for at least 5,000 rooms alone. In addition to March Madness coming in, we also have a regional volleyball tournament. So in total, we should see about 25,000 visitors this weekend. You can't find a hotel room in the city, he says. Shop around outside in the suburbs where prices might be a little cheaper. And coming up in sports, Johnny Davis making Wisconsin history again. The list he added his name to that hasn't been done by a Badger in seven years. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Hobbies, two for six bucks. Every day. Crispy fish with that spicy cake. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. Are your credit card payments five or six hundred or more on top of your vehicle payments? Chapter 7 and 13 plans start at only $275 a month. Consolidate with Chapter 13 or eliminate your debt under Chapter 7 and get your payments under control. I'm attorney Peter Francis Geraci. At Geraci Law, we consolidate or eliminate on your phone, from your home, or old school in person. Hit the debt free button. Click or call now. Everyone's invited to the prom. From the creators of the Book of Mormon, Elf and the Drowsy Chaperone, The Prom is a musical comedy about big Broadway stars on a mission to change the world and the love they discover that unites them all. The Prom makes you believe in musical comedy again. So full of happiness that you think your heart is about to burst. Everyone deserves a chance to celebrate. Everyone's invited to The Prom. Get your tickets at Overture.org. He should have used his power to serve Wisconsin. 
Instead, Ron Johnson served himself. An investigation found that Ron Johnson pushed through a special tax loophole that benefited his own family's business. After the loophole became law, Ron Johnson cashed out of the company for $5 million. Ron Johnson has doubled his wealth since taking office. Look up the facts and tell Ron Johnson to stop passing tax laws that benefit himself. Fry Construction invites you to celebrate spring with our big spring thaw sale. We're talking about savings of 22%. Many of your neighbors already know how we strive to meet and exceed expectations with each and every project. That's why they voted us best roofer two years in a row. Experience the best of Madison for yourself with Fry Construction. Get on board with our spring thaw sale. Save 22% off gutters or insulation with any full roofing project. Schedule your consultation today at fryconstruction.com. A local art teacher at high risk ends up in a fierce battle with COVID. I'll share how his brush with death gave him a fresh perspective back in the classroom. And we're watching for precipitation chances for the later part of this week. We'll time it out tomorrow morning from 437. The deal is officially done. A week after Aaron Rodgers announced he's returning to Green Bay, Rodgers signed on the dotted line to essentially a three-year, $150 million contract extension. The deal does include two voidable years in 2025 and 2026. Now he'll make $42 million this year and nearly $60 million next season. The best part for the Packers, after all the cuts and signings they did in the last 24 hours, they're just $4 million away from getting under the salary cap. Alondo Tucker was the first Badger to do it in, 20, in 2007. Eight years later, it was Frank Kaminsky. Now Johnny Davis can add his name to the list of Badgers named AP First Team All-American. Joining Davis from the Big Ten, Iowa's Keegan Murray and Kofi Coburn from Illinois. Last week, the Wisconsin Guard was tabbed the conference's Player of the Year. The State Boys Basketball Tournament tips off on Thursday and Marshall is heading back to the Kohl Center for the first time in 10 years with hopes of bringing home their first gold ball in two decades. And as Jordan Reed found out, that would be a perfect ending for this group of Cardinals. It's been 20 years since Marshall won the gold ball. To be able to come through and do what we had set our sights on at the beginning of the season. To be able to do that, not many teams can say that. And 10 years since the shot sent them back to the Cole Center. Now, the Cardinals are just a couple of days away from beginning another run at a state title. I think it's just pure excitement. I'm really, really happy that we get to, we get to share this together. Um, these kids have definitely put the time in and definitely earned this opportunity. So, um, yeah, it, it sunk in. Um, Thursday, it'll be real, though, for sure. But state wasn't the first goal this group set for the season. Well, our first goal was confidence, and we, didn't, we eventually didn't get that. So we're like, we gotta make the most of it. So tournament was the last thing we had. And now we're making a run, so now it's coming to reality. One that would be a dream come true for this team, especially for the seniors. It would mean everything to me to win a gold ball. Um, like I said, you dream of it as a kid. And to go out like that would just be a dream come true. The amount of work that they've put in and the amount of dedication that they've shown, um, it would obviously mean a ton, ton to them. And with my son being on the team, it would mean, mean a ton to me as well. But first, got to take care of business on Thursday night. In Marshall, Jordan Reed, News 3 Sports. So a pretty big week for us in sports. Yeah, a little bit busy. <laughs> uh, you're going to be all over the state? Yeah, yeah we're going we're gonna to try. Uh, I'm going to clone myself. <laughs> good luck. Good luck. Let's go to Garrett. At least the weather will be yeah, decent. Quiet, quiet so far in weather. Temperatures are mild. Right now, we're in the uh, lower to middle 50s. Nice. All right, Gary, thanks. Thanks for joining us for News for Now at 6. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.